dear students uh, good morning to everyone uh, today uh, we are going to see uh, yet another uh, topic uh, from the subject uh, clinical orthopedics okay so uh, this time also it's going to be a, a condition one of the important condition which uh, commonly uh, seen the patients uh, uh, encounter to the outpatient clinics physiotherapy clinics okay what is the condition uh, the condition uh, the name of the condition is called as decorvans tenosynovitis decorvan is the name of the physician who described about that condition who described and and uh, he elaborated about the clinical features and uh, various uh, uh, treatment methods for this uh, problem okay so the condition is called along with his name okay d corvine d q u e r v a i n okay that is the name d corvine stenosynovitis sometimes in text uh, some of the textbook it is also called as d corvine stenovaginitis whatever it is it is a, the, the condition is same okay what it is it is nothing but acute inflammation of the tendon sheath tendon sheath of which muscle the two muscles which are the tendons of abductor pollicis longus and extensor pollicis brevis these two muscles okay the tendons of these two muscles they are getting acutely inflamed where it is at the area of wrist okay at the wrist region over here actually these two muscles are acting on the on the thumb okay so as they pass pass the radial stridor process over here if there is a friction and pressure when you do the thumb movements or wrist movements like this okay the twisting movements when we do what happens these two tendons are getting more pressure more tension as a result of that the covering actually the covering is getting affected the covering is called tendon sheath that is affected the fiber sheath is getting affected as a result of that there will be a inflammation when you palpate you can see a nodule like inflammation over there this is a problem okay so what happens because of this problem what happens the patient finds a huge difficulty in moving the wrist and moving the thumb and the patient complains pain over here at the junction of the wrist and uh, radial part of the forearm okay especially around the radial stylad process when we palpate there will be a more nodule like uh, appearance uh, uh, feel will get you will get over there not only that there will also be tenderness over there and tenderness usually will be at the third three grade three or grade four okay and it will uh, totally restrict a person doing any movements also especially the patient will complain uh, difficulty in lifting the uh, the pan or uh, any kitchen vessels like that okay when, when they do like that they have to have uh, enough pressure on the thumb also isn't it so that will be a problematic one and of course the movement will, will be a difficult one brushing kind of things and all will not be possible okay so uh, it is because of the as i told you it is because of the problem at the fiber sheath of the uh, tendons okay abductor pollicis longus and uh, extensor pollicis brevis who gets this problem most often it is the middle aged woman women are getting more problem, more 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 prone uh, compared to the uh, men especially the middle aged people are getting more uh, encounters with this clinical problem the exact cause is unknown however it is uh, often clinically said that it is because of the repeated use of the wrist use of repeated use any activity that uses a repeated activity of the wrist and thumb okay one of the commonest uh, activity is wringing the cloth when you wring the cloth you know what happens the exactly the the pressure and the and the and the contraction 
uh, tension goes to the abduct of policies longest and uh, extension of policies brevis. That is one of the commonest uh, uh, functional activity uh, pathologically affects the, the these two tendons. And also the players in the sports field, the players who have the racket, the badminton racket or tennis racket, when they hold and they do this kind of wrist movements, they also tend to get prone to get this problem. Okay, that's it. Now coming to the management. What is the management for this problem? It is the first and foremost management criteria for this problem is restriction from the activity that is causing the problem. Okay, rest. And then I say cryotherapy. In various methods, we can give cryotherapy depending upon the region. Okay, it can be a ice cold application or ice cube massage application. Or immersion into the cold water. This kind of activities, uh, things can be a good use when, it, when the problem is acute. When it goes to subacute, uh, we have, uh, you know, when the problem is persisting, you know, what happens, the patients clinically most often are referred to take hydrocortisone injection. It's a steroid injection given at the tendon sheath where there is a inflammation present persistently. Some people are getting recovery from with this. Rest along with the injection, they're getting recovery. And physiotherapy. If it is prolonged, then they, they can be referred to physiotherapy. Physiotherapy, as we all know, for all soft tissue injuries, the ultrasonic therapy will be a, a fantastic uh, choice. And it can... Uh, uh, heal. It can accelerate the healing process of any soft tissue injuries as so with this condition also ultrasound therapy can be a good use. Ultrasound therapy, laser therapy kind of things will be more useful. For pain relieving we can use uh, TENS, IFT uh, kind of therapies, modalities can be used. Okay. Suppose if the patients are getting this problem, you know, they have the problem long-standing, very persistently, in spite of all the conservative management, what can be done for them? The ultimate choice is surgical uh, correction of the tendon sheath. Okay, what kind of correction will be done? They will do the slit, slit on the nodule-like area in the tendon sheath. Uh, and also they will do the de-roofing procedure. That means the tendon will be made to slide easily along the ins, uh, 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 over the uh, tendon. The sheath, the, the connection between the sheath and the, and the tendon will be, uh, will be made free. This is called de-roofing procedure. The slitting and de-roofing procedure is the common surgical uh, method. Surgical procedure is done for the decorvine stenosynovitis. So one of the common household as well as sports condition that is encountered musculoskeletally. Okay, so this is all about this condition and uh, uh, please listen this uh, lecture uh, uh, repeatedly and try to understand. It's one of the commonest clinical condition. Okay, so once you watch this uh, video, uh, I will be uh, giving you some small activities. Okay for the clinical aspect as well as uh, PT ortho. So those who are in the clinical uh, subject, they can do only the clinical uh, related activity. And those who are on both clinical and the PT ortho, they need to do both, okay? Uh, thank you very much, have a nice day.